Aviators need to know about airspeed to successfully take off, fly, and land an aircraft. But what exactly is airspeed? Well, sit back, buckle up your seatbelts, and we're about to find out. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain speaking. Today aboard our aircraft we're going to show you the different types of airspeed. On your top left you will see indicated airspeed and on your bottom left you will see calibrated airspeed. While on your right top you will see true airspeed and finally on your bottom right you shall find ground speed. Indicated airspeed or IAS is the direct instrument reading from the airspeed indicator, or ASI. Indicated airspeed is uncorrected for variations in atmospheric density and for errors in the installation of the instrument. Aircraft manufacturers can use indicated airspeed as a basis for aircraft performance. Also, in a pilot's aircraft flight manual, AFM, or pilot's operating handbook, POH, the takeoff, landing, and stall speeds are all given in measurements of IAS. But teacher, teacher, how does the airspeed indicator know how fast we're going? Well, that bright idea was the pitot-static system, but that's a lesson for another day. We as humans tend to get things wrong every now and again, and that's why we have calibrated airspeed. This makes allowances for installation and instrument errors, which can impact the speed reading up to several knots. This usually is a greater problem at lower airspeeds. So you might be thinking, okay, well, I know indicated airspeed, and I know calibrated airspeed. That's it, right? Well, actually, we also have true airspeed. So if airspeed is just the speed of an object relative to the air that it's in, Hang on a second, that air is going to change. So, true airspeed is calibrated airspeed corrected for altitude and variations in non-standard temperature. This is because air density is variable and therefore atmospheric pressure is variable. So, the higher up you go, the less dense the air is. Temperature also tends to vary, depending on your altitude. What this means is that for a given calibrated airspeed, true airspeed increases with altitude, and vice versa. There are two methods of calculating true airspeed. The most accurate is to use a flight computer, which takes your calibrated airspeed, your pressure altitude, and your temperature to calculate the value. The other method is to use this FAA rule of thumb, which says add 2% to your calibrated airspeed for every 1000 feet of altitude. Got it? Good. Why do we need true airspeed? And what is it used for? True airspeed is important because we use it when filing a flight plan. The last measurement we need to know about is called ground speed. And for this, imagine a swimmer swimming with the tide. The speed of the swimmer through the water may be significant, but because they're traveling in the same direction as the tide, their motion relative to the ground will be greater. The same can be applied to an airplane. If you have an airplane that's traveling in an air mass that's traveling at the same direction as the airplane, the speed of the airplane relative to the ground is going to be greater than its airspeed. Ground speed increases with a tailwind and decreases with a headwind. My name is Patrick Gower and I hope you learned something from this video. And keep an eye on your airspeed indicator to make sure you get enough lift to counteract this little force I like to call weight. <laughs>